Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing a, hopefully a short review on the Sony RX100 Mark IV. And here she is, or he, whatever. Um, it's a really compact little camera. I mean, extremely compact, beautifully made. I love the construction of it. It feels metal. It's sure it must be some sort of aluminium, metal, whatever. Um, but it's well made. It's quite, it's quite heavy. Um, but in a nice way, not heavy in a, um, a nasty way. In fact, it, it'd get annoying. It's heavy in a real good quality way. Um, I love the RX100 range of cameras. I recently <coughs> purchased an RX100 Mark I, which is here, and I already own the RX100 Mark III, of which there's a link to my review on the Mark III um, in this video. Um, so I went out and got a Mark I for some bizarre reason, and the Mark I is really, really nice. They're all really nice. Um, I've done a video, I'm working on a video, comparing the picture quality uh, between these two cameras. I'll explain what the dif major differences are between this one and the Mark I, which we have here. Uh, very quickly, the Mark IV has got a tilty, tilty, realty flip-up screen. Great for vlogging, so you can actually hold it away and you can see yourself and it's great so brilliant for that it's got electronic viewfinder which the mark one has got no viewfinder um i thought actually i would use the viewfinder a lot more than what i do but i don't um i do use it particularly in bright situations but uh it's not a big hindrance that the mark one hasn't got it um and also the viewfinder of a Mark IV is quite a bit better than the one of a Mark III. I gave up using it on the Mark III because it was really fiddly and the quality wasn't terribly good. Um, so that's the viewfinder. And obviously this shoots 4K video where the Mark I, II and III don't shoot 4K video. But the Mark III's HD video is excellent. It's very, very good. It records in the XAVCS codec. Um, where this only records in AVCHD. Um, as I say, you'll see a video come up on my channel of a comparison between the video quality from the Mark I, which is that one, to the Mark IV. Um, I've actually stuck Sony's little grip on this Mark IV because I found it just was a, um, it was lacking a grip because there was, is no grip. As you can see on the Mark I, there is no grip at all. Um, putting that on just gives it that little bit more grip it is very small um but that's the whole idea of this camera being very compact um as i say the tilted screen is absolutely super love that obviously it tilts upwards as you can see but it will tilt down as well so you can get you know your overhead shots it doesn't tilt down very far but far enough to be able to get it up to do your your overhead shots. Um, there are a number of people that are saying the buttons are a bit small. Well, um, get over it is what I say because it is a small camera. The funny thing is, if you make these buttons bigger on the back, you either suffer with a smaller screen or the body has to be bigger. So I'm well happy with these buttons. I, I find them tactile. Um, I don't find an issue with the fact that the buttons are smaller yeah the record button is recessed and when you're holding it back a bit it is awkward to get to i'll i'll give you that um i don't know why they didn't put the record button on the top or to be able to reassign the shutter release button to be the video trigger panasonic do that very successfully um so you could actually do it like that you know but anyway hey ho but um yeah, very, very impressed with the picture quality. The stills from it are absolutely superb. Um, it took me a little while just to get used to the best focusing, uh, best method for focusing. Um, I, find, I have found I'm getting much sharper results using the spot focus. Uh, so you choose your spot and then that's where it will focus. Um, I'm finding that for me, a lot more accurate than just using the wide focus uh, but i've pre-assigned this uh, c button to 
how I want it to focus and I find that's nice, quick and easy, uh, no fiddling around, straight to that. Uh, I've pre-assigned the right hand button to ISO, so that makes that nice and easy. And the control ring, it's got a control ring the same as uh, the Mark 1, but it's a bit more, it feels more tactile and more responsive. I don't know whether that's my imagination or whether it is, but this control ring around the front here can be pre-assigned for whatever you would like to use it for. Uh, could be aperture, could be shutter speed. I've set mine um, to exposure compensation. Uh, and I find that for me is exactly what I would want. Um, that's, that's perfect. I don't have to fill it again, fill around in the menu for that um, is excellent. And the other great thing with this, um, when you're filming uh, outdoors, it's got a built-in electronic ND filter. I've pre-assigned this button on the left here to uh, go to my ND filter. And uh, I find that is excellent. It's great for when you're out filming. Um, the 4K footage that this produces is phenomenal. Um, I just love it. It's excellent. This would match my A7R Mark II and my uh, 6500, actually. That's what I'm filming on now is the A6500. Um, I'm doing the close-up shots, hopefully, on my Panasonic FZ2000 and the wide-angle shot on the A7R Mark II in manual focus with a Canon lens uh, fitted via the MC11 adapter. Ha, huh, there we go. Um, yeah, so with 4K footage, if I need to do B-roll, I am very happy and very comfortable with using this camera for B-roll. Um, it only shoots up to five minutes in 4K. Um, and that's a, that could be for a lot of people a little bit limiting. For me, it's no big deal because I'm only doing cutaways or if I'm out and about, I'm just getting quick shots of, uh, of what's going on. Um, even if you're filming somebody chatting, like I, when I'd done the review, uh, not the review, the comparison between this and the Mark 1 version, I use this for filming on. So as long as you keep it under five minutes, you're not going to go far wrong. And the other big disappointment that this camera has is it has no mic jack or headphone jack. That uh, actually is a bit of a bummer, in all honesty. Um, but again, you have to look at it realistically. Look at the size of it. How would you fit a mic, a mic, mic jack? Mic are, you know, that sort of long internally, aren't they? That's going to take up too much space. So they'd have to make the camera bigger again. It all comes back to they fitted it in this form factor. So that's why there's no mic jack or headphone jack. Record the sound separately, then, then uh, sync it afterwards. With all the modern software like Final Cut Pro 10, I guess you could do it in Adobe Premiere. I don't use Adobe, Adobe Premiere, so I don't know. Um, so I'm not terribly concerned. It is annoying, but I'm not terribly concerned about that. Um, I'm not concerned about it at all, really. Um, and, you know, people do harp on about um, battery life being bad. Well, you know, they are tiny, tiny little batteries. So again, it keeps coming back to the form factor, the size of a camera. If you want better battery life, you need a bigger, bigger slot for the battery to go in. Well, you get a bigger slot, you're going to need a bigger battery than that, aren't you? So um, these batteries, I find, are, are fine. Just keep yourself a few spare ones. Um, as I say, the ideal thing with this camera, it easily slots in one a pouch like this. I use this pouch. I, uh, you know, it's a good pouch, cheap pouch. Um, main camera sl slots in there, camera's on my belt, and then side pocket you've got, you know, spare batteries. Um, don't know how many I've got in there, yeah, two spare batteries, and um, a spare SD card, oh yeah, SD cards. Um, to record 4K footage in 100 megabits a second, you need an SDXC uh, UH3. Uh, this is a UH1, so it records 4K, but not in the 100 megabits. You've got to get a much faster card than, than that. Um, but again, that's not, I don't see that as a downside. That's just what you need, you know. Um, but uh, that's my initial thoughts on the RX100 Mark IV. Fantastic little camera. 
love it to bits really do enjoy using this i love taking photographs and taking video with this camera because uh, it's always on my pouch um standard auto modes on the top here you know i tend to use after priority more than anything else um built-in flash which i have used um and you know i don't like flash but i've, only, I've used it a couple of times um the, the beauty with it if you do want to use it, it you can tilt it so you can bounce it to get a more natural light you can bounce it off a ceiling to take a photo don't know if that fired then yeah it did fire yeah so you can do that to take a photograph so that's absolutely fine um and it's got as i say the built-in viewfinder you have to pull it out so when you pop it up you have to pull it out to get it to work um but it's lovely it's nice and sharp and it's got a diopter setting to suit different eyesights um so there we go and the other thing that's really nice with it um what pretty much all the sonics have is nfc so um if you got it won't work with uh, nfc doesn't work with iphones by the way you have to do it manually but if you've got an android phone you don't need to go into the app or anything like that do you just tap the phone against the side of the camera it boots up there's no don't have to do anything else that is it you haven't got to go into the app manually um it boots it up and then you can view what you're uh, filming or what photographs you're taking remotely from the app and obviously take the pictures you can use a zoom um it's a bit difficult to show you what i mean when I've, let's put the camera down put the camera down there and as you can see there i've got i can hit that button to go telephoto I doubt whether the camera will do much because uh, like that you can go wide yeah it's struggling because the lens is touching the desk but um, and then you can take a photograph I don't know if that's in photo video mode photo mode I mean use that take a photograph fantastic all built in to this tiny tiny little camera so um i'm a big sony fan i wouldn't say i'm a fanboy i like I, I i like any kit that does the job you know um but i think the sony's really do do the job and i've used many other different makes of cameras but at the moment um i'm pretty much in the sony ecosystem i've got quite a few lenses for the a7r mark ii and for the uh, a6500 accessories microphone accessories um but i still love my panasonic fz 2000 so there we go that's a bit of a rambling so that's a rambled on review of the uh sony rx100 mark IV. fantastic little camera love it um i do hope you enjoy my reviews i look forward to doing them i enjoy doing them so if you do get enjoyment out of these and some uh, something out of it please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button and tell all your friends that'd be fantastic for me so thanks very much for watching uh, hopefully see you uh, when i do the next one thanks for now bye